case today we performed was a uh, tracheal stenosis that uh, acutely formed after a traumatic intubation for a young gentleman that was intubated in the field after suffering a acute cardiac arrest. We initially dilated the lesion just to get a sense of the length of the stenosis and how friable or how stiff the scar tissue was. And then from there, we uh, proceeded to use the laser. For my practice, I like to start with lower wattage settings just to see how it interacts with the tissue and then increase in increments of three to five watts. We were able to dilate him to not a normal airway, but a much wider airway where he'll be, be much more comfortable breathing. I use uh, the OmniGuy uh, quite a bit for uh, laryngeal uh, lesions like papillomas, uh, other benign and malignant lesions. Uh, I have a, uh, a sizable practice of using it for uh, radiation failure, glottic carcinomas that we do salvage laser resections for and then a, a lot of airway surgery, subglottic and tracheal stenoses, trying to manage it endoscopically rather than going to a more definitive open procedure. One of the reasons I was an early adopter of the OmniGuide uh, laser fiber is that it, uh, I thought it had a uh, much better safety profile than the old line of sight, that if you're able to put the fiber down in the wound, you're going to have less scatter of the beam than if you were trying to do an old-fashioned line of sight through a microscope or through a uh, micromanipulator on the bronchoscope. From a, a, a resident training perspective, the fiber inside the handpiece definitely gives much more manual dexterity, manual control of the distal tip of the uh, laser as compared to the old uh, toggle switch on the line of sight uh, microscope. Majority uh, is, is OmniGuide uh, laser fiber in my practice. Some of my other partners do still use the uh, uh, line of sight just because that's their comfort level. Um, but I think over time, probably have more uh, converts uh, to the OmniGuide system.